emergency and about 20 of my friends diagnosed and a number of which had died at that point. So uh, my impression was that it was something that killed you. And um, depending on where you were at, determined how quickly you died because <clears throat> back then, um, if you got pneumonia, you were dead in two, three weeks. And I mean, I'd have, I'd have dinner with friends on a Friday night and then by the next Friday they'd be dead. I went into uh, the exam room for him to give me my results. He didn't say anything, he just hugged me and that was basically his way of letting me know, okay, this is the deal. And uh, first thing he said was, uh, don't plan the funeral, which is a line I've used a lot since then. It just felt very unfair. And I was on 13th Street and 8th Avenue, and it was 6 o'clock in the evening when we left. And so I'm walking up 8th Avenue, and it's, it's rush hour. So there's thousands of people coming. It's like salmon swimming, swimming upstream. And I was, I was just hoping that someone would run into me because I really wanted to punch somebody. I really wanted to, I wanted to get in a fight. I wanted to get in a fist fight and hit someone and, and hurt something really bad. It took me probably about it, maybe another six months or a year and some counseling to, to calm down and say, okay, well, let's, let's just deal with this. I got on a couple of clinical trials and it took, uh, like when I started, my T cells were under 200, my viral load was in the millions, and I weighed 40 pounds less than I do now, so I weighed about 130 pounds. Um, not a big guy to begin with, so it wasn't, wasn't really, I wasn't very healthy. <clears throat> and I had, I had, I guess I'd done a lot of spiritual uh, um, research or in, just, trying to get comfortable with the idea of dying. Um, and I did. I got very comfortable. I was very peaceful about it and no big deal. I was okay with it. And then the clinical trials progressed and I started getting better. I just, I just spent the past three years of my life getting comfortable with dying. What do I do now? The biggest misconception about HIV probably is the gay thing. I hate to keep bringing that up, but um, it does affect everybody. And I, the, in this wonderful journey that I've had, I met some really incredible heterosexuals who are HIV positive. And a lot of times I wish, I wish they were the people making the news. I wish they were the people speaking out. And they do. It's just the media tends to focus more on something that's going to, I guess, bring a little smoke, you know, bring a little more agitation um, in a development as opposed to, uh, an, there's a, so many married women that I know who are HIV positive, and I mean married for 15, 20 years with kids, teenagers, and then they find out that their husband has been doing things on the side, and that's how they find out they're HIV positive. I kind of have a theory, if, if everybody was open about their status and everybody got tested and everybody took their medications, you could pretty much stop HIV. And so I hope that by participating in this, more people will be more open about their status, more people will get tested, and more people will get comfortable with the idea of taking medications every day, because it's really not that big of a deal.